Hi, welcome to Warren Works. Today is another episode of my 52 cards in 52 weeks challenge. Last week I drew this eight of hearts, which says scrap wood build, so I'm going to be building something out of scrap wood today. So looking around the shop, I saw that there was scrap wood laying all over the place, and I really wasn't sure what to build until I saw my trash can, which these five gallon buckets work just fine, but they fill up quick, and they're round, so it's not a great use of the space, and most of all, they're just plain ugly. So I took some quick measurements and went to my plywood scrap to find what I had that would fit. And I just kind of tweaked the measurements to fit the scrap material, squared off some stuff, and I cut out the pieces to make a rectangular box. And I didn't do anything fancy here. I just used some glue and then trim nailed it together with my nail gun. And I really didn't do a great job here. I had a couple blowouts, which was surprising because I'm usually pretty good with the nail gun, but it is a little tricky into half inch plywood. And since I used some half inch maple plywood, half inch birch, MDF, I really used just whatever I had because it does not matter for a trash can. And this is all going to be getting covered up with some other material anyways to make it look a heck of a lot nicer. I don't really care what the inside of the trash can looks like, but the outside, I went to the main scrap bin and started picking out some material. What do we have here? Anything coming? Ow! And I had a bunch of offcuts of white oak, and then I had a whole bunch of little offcuts of walnut too, so I can go over to the joiner and flatten one face and then square up an edge. And then I went over to the table saw and ripped all these pieces into strips. I had a bunch of these walnut offcuts that were already in about 5 8 squares, so I trued everything up to exactly 5 8 of an inch, and then I ran all the oak through, cutting those to 5 8 inch pieces as well. With that done, I could move the fence over so it was an eighth inch from the blade. And then I rotated those squares that I had previously cut, and I cut all the 5 8 squares into little strips. So I had a ton of strips. It's amazing how much material you can get out of a couple little offcuts. I was blown away by the amount of these strips that I was able to make, but I was also blown away by the amount of them that I was going to need. And then I just cut them on the chop saw at random lengths. So I had a whole bunch of little pieces that were eighth inch thick, five eighths wide, and just all random length. I wanted to just glue these on in kind of a cool pattern, so I smeared down a bunch of glue and started with one strip at a time. I would alternate white oak and then walnut, and then white oak and then walnut. And this was almost like laying hardwood floor just with the random lengths and trying to stagger all the pieces so the joints weren't in the same spot, just on a much smaller scale. And I didn't use any fasteners, I just glued everything down. I smeared the glue nice and thin and then put the pieces on and they tacked up and held pretty quickly. And it was really fun, it actually went pretty quick. Each one of these sides only took about 10 or 15 minutes to lay out. I just, I smeared some glue down and stuck the pieces and I would, I would do a couple inches at a time. I tried to do this whole side at once and the glue kind of started to dry by the time I got all the way to the far end because I used type bond 2 which dries nice and quick. Once everything was dry I let that sit up for about an hour and trimmed everything off with the track saw. With all the edges trimmed I can move over to my belt sander. This surface was pretty rough so I figured the belt sander was a good place to start. I really don't use the belt sander a whole lot anymore because I have this Bosch sander which has the turbo mode, which is kind of like a Festool Rotex sander. It's just not green. Honestly, this sander is amazing. It almost eliminates the need for a belt sander at all. It hogs off material extremely quickly. I used some of the sawdust from the belt sander. I mixed that with some wood glue and a couple drops of water, and I made some quick and easy wood filler to fill in all the cracks. The pieces were not perfectly laid because I was just gluing them, so they did shift around a little bit as I worked. And once that filler dried about halfway, I went back with the belt sander to knock all the high spots off. And then I sanded it out with the orbital sander. I just didn't film all that because it was quite a bit of sanding. And then I took some other walnut strips. These were also eighth inch thick and I think they were about three quarter inch wide. And I nailed these around the corners just to kind of frame everything in and give it a nice finished look. I did the same thing around the top and bottom. So it was fully framed all the way around the outside. And then on the top, I wanted something a little bit thicker because I wanted something a little bit more rigid, so I had some quarter inch offcuts. These offcuts are all from when you're cutting a board down and you have that maybe one inch offcut across the whole length of the board. That's a great use of that material is you can turn it into strips to make edge banding or just little pieces of trim to go around frames and all kinds of stuff like this. And then I had that one piece that was a little too wide that I trimmed down on the table saw. 
and I sanded all that in. I didn't film too much of the sanding because it's not that exciting, but then a couple of the gaps, I just put some wood glue in there and hand sanded them out, and that does a nice job to just fill any of the little imperfections. And with that done, I wanted to add some handles, and I remembered I made these funky handles a while back. They're actually pretty ugly, and I never really had a use for them, so I went into my fancier scrap bin, and there they were. They're these nice little cherry handles that I made for a filing cabinet, and I kind of intentionally made them ugly, but then the filing cabinet, I actually just didn't want these handles on because I... I thought they were a little too ugly for the look, even though I was almost going for an ugly look, if that makes any kind of sense, just because filing cabinets are inherently ugly. But for a trash can, they worked just perfectly. And then I could use some teak oil just to give some nice protection, and I really just wanted to see how this would look with some finish on it. You can see it really brought everything to life, and this was just a fun project all around. I totally had a great time with this. It was not what I, I had no idea what I was gonna build out of scrap when I first walked into the shop, and I just kind of let my mind run, and I had a great time building this piece. How's that? Much better. Well, say what you want, but I think this trash can came out awesome. This was a fun project that I totally didn't expect to take this far, but uh, it's over the top for a trash can, and what better thing to make out of scrap than something to put more scrap and stuff into. So I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna make next week. A the spades festool vacuum upgrades I'm gonna be upgrading my festool vacuum next week so come on back for that and as always thank you for watching <laughs>